Welcome to Nonprofit Network, powered by Stokes Auction Group. We are a group of fundraising professionals that specialize in raising funds to improve communities of all sizes. Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> <laughs> On a lighter note! Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving! Everybody! Uh, Happy Thanksgiving! Welcome! Hello! That was an awful transition, but you probably won't see the prior. So, <laughs> thanks for being with us. It is the week of Thanksgiving. It is Tuesday before we kind of slow down for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. A four day weekend is upon us, and I am very excited. I, have to say. I am too. My name is Kelly Schenfeld. Oh. This is Shelby Stokes and Paul yeah. Schenfeld. I will introduce my team because you know what I love them and they're my people so I'm thankful for hello them. fellow fundraiser fanatics ready for fun times on Thanksgiving fun fun yes that's a lot of <laughs> that's F's a and, lot of F's that's a lot of <laughs> F's, a lot of F's. <laughs> mm-hmm. before we start this podcast I have to make a small correction oh it started we're moving yeah from up. last week's <laughs> podcast okay. um $2.5 billion from JDRF. They have not raised $2.5 billion. Mm-hmm. They have wa- raised well over that, but they've invested $2.5 billion towards the cure. So I wanted to make that sure. Nobody has said anything to me about it, but I'm sure if I don't say this, they will, and this number might not even be right. Let's just <laughs> say JDRF has spent a ton of money trying to find a cure. Does that work for On you? research. Yep. On research. Is that for work sure. for you? I, I love billions that. Of I dollars. love that. Billions. Yeah. And we can say that because we know it's more than one, it's but we don't know how many. But yeah, it's billions. And, and I know that like we stay away from billions because as a nonprofit, you don't really like want to state how much revenue you're making and how grandiose it is. But at the same time, like JDRF specifically has really been on the focus of curing or helping yeah. individuals with juvenile diabetes. Since 1970. Since 1970. And it's the iterations time. and improvements. Yeah, a long time have been a long time coming at times, yeah. but we are making strides. Oh, we're so right there. Cool. And we're right it there. It feels like we're closer It feels we like we're right there. I feel like we're been. all going to be going to some parties. I try to stay away from that just because we've been, <laughs> well, it feels been like saying we've said that, that for, for years, but it does feel like we're very, very close right now. But and, I wanted to say that because yeah. I, I, I... It is a tremendous fundraising effort that's gone on since 1970. Incredible. Really. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. So JDR is great, and we are here to tell you that. Um, this, yeah. this Today's episode, like uh, normally we go with the Thanksgiving theme and thankful, and I kind of just wanted to hop in here and talk a little bit about my weekend. Um, I was doing a fundraiser for Native American youth and scholarships for Native American youths um, throughout the Pacific Northwest, and what ended up happening is we saw a bunch of tribal leaders come together into one ballroom and raise a lot of money for um, the youth of our of, of Native American communities. I say our communities. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I always like seeing individuals get a chance to thrive. And the fact that we are giving those opportunities to people is really, really important to me. Um, how that ties into being thankful is it was a very stressful um show that we had and i think part of the reason it was so stressful is because we had a lot of leaders from different communities coming together that are used to kind of doing things their own way and and that's okay but the collaboration that has to take place can sometimes be challenging because you have so many beautifully Uh, beautiful leaders that are used to kind of delegating. So coming together and watching those different entities like come to one outcome that was so magical was very inspiring. But what it caused for the event was a little bit of stress, Mm -hmm. right? And there were things changing. Like like we we got there, we had the silent auction, and then we heard, hey, someone's bringing six more items for our silent auction that's already underway. Well, the team is like, okay, now we got to find a new table, clear a spot, build it, build it in our software, then print the form, and now get it out oh, within the next five or ten minutes, right? Man. So, and, and like, I guess like you talk about those interchanging pieces as an event person, and it's easy to like melt down. It's easy to be like, oh my gosh, this all has to happen right now. Stress, stress, red alert, red alert. And as I'm sitting in that ballroom with all of this stuff kind of happening around me and us strategizing on how best to execute, I thought to myself, look what's happening. Mm -hmm. All of these leaders are coming together to make this happen. Yes, everyone wants, everyone has a different vision on the execution of how this goes, which is causing a little bit of stress. But at the end of the day, you have tribes Mm -hmm. from all over the Pacific Northwest coming together under one North Star, which is to raise money for youth. 
And if we try to keep that in our mind's eye and as our North Star, everything else falls into place. Yeah. Right? Like, so what? We had to find another table and stress out and build the cards. Four of those items, guaranteed bid, 10 minutes before the silent auction close. Mm -hmm. And here we are, the event people that know how to do events, thinking, you're going to put out these items and they're not going to get the exposure and they're going to fall flat in their face. Boy, were we wrong. Oh, it was Native American really? art that sold like that. Yeah. And it was beautiful art. It was gorgeous and it was a great donation. So I guess like where I want to come from in, a, in our podcast today is like we can get so caught up in the nuts and bolts, perfect execution. But at the end of the day, you just got to sit back and let it go. Yeah, and I think that one of the uh, tags that I use when I talk to people that are nervous is I tell them, we're just here to birth your baby. You guys have been planning this, growing this. Mark and I are the doctors. <laughs> we're coming in and we're going to catch your baby. So <laughs> remember like remember yeah. that, too, as an event person, that it is not your baby. It is their baby. You're just here to help them do the best that they can with it, make sure it gets the ultimate outcome the safe outcome, right? Because we, when I mean safe, you know, you're here to make sure that you tell them we have to respect these donors. We need to do this. There are certain things we do and don't do for your success. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. It's not, it's, it, you get caught up in the mechanics of the perfect, no more silent items, no more live items. That's too many items. You can gently suggest in your report, which I know you're going to do. Oh, yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> and, and all our reports are is for us to help all of these organizations maximize their dollars. Yeah. The result of those items, you didn't think that was going to happen. Right. Nobody on your team thought it was going to happen. If I was there, I would probably say thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no way. These things don't have the exposure that everything else does. No. Nope. Yeah. But in the end... There you are. They guaranteed bid. Right. Yep. And I come from a place of when I get there, I, I have a plan. This is going to happen. This gonna, I'm very structured. When I get outside of that structure, that's where I start mm -hmm. to get the heat. Um, and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. But, to, so, but I've learned to roll with the punches better. And, and that's a perfect example. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah. hey, here's six more items. Uh, you got 20 minutes before it closes. <laughs> Can we get them entered? Yeah. Right. Let's do it. Yeah. Hey, even if we got to do it by hand. Well, and, and you know, <laughs> we, uh, you know, go, running back by, by running back on this event, like we had timeline issues. Like things kept getting added, both in the silent and the live. And then all of a sudden, we were early in the event, and one of the leaders came up and asked for the microphone, and I handed off the microphone, which is not something I normally. And now do. you're late in the event. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and I, and I'm, oh no, you just came like up that. Yeah. And I'm sitting there just looking at it like, I gave up the microphone. I know better. I shouldn't have done that. And I'm just smiling through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get the mic back. Hey, big round of applause. Bah, bah, bah. Well, fast forward to a, an hour later in the program. And this individual, on behalf of his tribe, donated $22,000. Yeah, done. So, like... Was it worth the five minutes? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it was. Like silly me, like like worried about taking the microphone, and then you watch this like magical happening. That would it have changed if he had the time to speak or not? Who knows? But at the end of the day, like that was time well spent because he deserved the respect of the room, and um, it, it was just interesting to like go in with so many not preconceived notions, but like, you know, this is the playbook yeah. and this is how we should be running it. And then it was yeah. just like, all of that seems to go out the window out and the still door. it's like, wow, what but an you amazing know, night. But we, we are taught that. <laughs> we are taught know. that by our clients. We are taught that by our auctioneers and ringmen that have been doing it for a long time. And one thing that is happening is paradigms are changing and they're having to change. Not only in the auction business, but in all facets of everything so the way it was even a year ago is different today so in the events industry if you can't go with the flow and yet have a leadership role because when you're there as an auctioneer you're the leader you are you are reporting to somebody but it is now you're the doctor. You just strapped on the gloves and you're coming in. <laughs> you know what? You, you basically, so I kind of had a plan on where this podcast was going and you just eloquently gave me the transition that, that I was hoping for. And the fact of the matter is, is paradigms are shifting. They are. Like things are changing. Like 
you know, when I'm looking at like the makeup of what makes a good fundraising auctioneer right now, it is different than it was five years ago. Yeah. And it's a lot different than it was 10 years ago. And what I, what I am finding in regards to what we do and what we pride ourselves on and compare ourselves to the other entities that do what we do in the market, the people that are succeeding actually care about what's going on. Not the paycheck. That's Not the right. paycheck. Not how cool you sound on the microphone. Not how fast you can talk because you've been to auction school. It's about investing in the people that are at these events and aligning with what they want and going out and executing on their behalf to send their mission forward. Now, it's very easy to rest on our laurels and say, hey, we've done it this way for so long and this is how it's done. That doesn't work anymore. I had a local event planner reach out to me who was working with a, another individual that's a, a friend predator in the market. And they were basically making some demands on a, a script and a timeline that was required 48 hours in advance. Mm -hmm. And that stress being put on the event planner is just like, this is not Whoa. a priority, right? And you look at that and you think, are you doing it for the right reasons? Like mm -hmm. are is this the priority of the group? And Recheck I really, your a little your bit, stuff. a little bit, and and then you yeah. look at the other friend peddlers that are very very busy in the market. And I, I'm here to tell you, like, I'm not going to call out people individually, but there are people with less talent in on the fundraising space than yeah. us that are busier than us because they are going out there and they are invested in the community. So if you really want to look at like being better and being more effective in a fundraising environment, you really need to give a lot of thought to what is best for the group and then reverse engineer how you can be yep. a value add to that organization. I, I will give you an Absolutely, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Check your ego at the door, first of all. Mm -hmm. You have to. That would be step one in yep. that example, mm -hmm. right? You're losing you, who is going to be the voice of the mission, you're, you're gonna, your delivery is going to convey that this is more about you than it is about them. Mm -hmm. Just because your, your ego gets in the way. Right. Yeah. Can ego be useful and handy? Sure. Right. Yeah. right? And you need, uh, you need some to you stand some. in front sure. of those people. I mean, that's hard. Three right? episodes right. ago was a podcast that we did called Be Flexible. Yeah, mm -hmm. is that right? Yes. Yeah. Some underlying themes here. Yeah, uh, right? keep, so, going back well, it's in, it's, it's in our face. It's in our face. It is. Our, yeah, it it's, is. It's, it's in our face. Well, you know, Mark uh, and I had a rare opportunity, which that kind of just made me think of this in that, you know, we, we invest our hearts into every single auction that we attend. I know you do that, too, and I know you do that, too. Mm -hmm. That's what makes you guys so good. But we had an opportunity to bring somebody's story to the light of the community to where the community could really get some teeth into what this gal was doing. And by us taking five minutes to ask her about her story and welcome her and love her and hug her and be with her in that moment of sadness, we opened so many doors for so many people that night by allowing her to come on that stage, give her the mic. There's that panic. So that was not scripted? No. Nope. And it was uh, all that we told them is we are going to give her the mic. She's going to come up and talk about her tree. And her tree sold for $35,000 after she talked about the tree. And it was a heartbreaking story. But she's done something good with it. So you never know in your events who else is in the audience that is going to benefit from what you say, what you do, how you act. And, and that I think is also something to keep your mind on is that we have no idea who's in that audience. It could be somebody that, that we changed their life that night. They could change our life that night, or there could be two people that connect, which is what happened here. The person that bought the tree and the people that put the tree together connected. And those lives were forever changed after that connection. So wow. you have to look farther Amazing. out than how many dollars did we raise tonight? How many items did we have tonight? How was the catering? Was the food cold? <laughs> was it warm? Was there enough booze? How was the decor? No. Start looking at it exactly like Shelby and Polly said. And that is, 
Who can I connect tonight by the words that come out of my mouth? Who can I, who can I help yeah. tonight that's maybe not even a part of this organization, but after tonight, they're going to believe in it even more. Yeah, and, and to tie that back to a previous theme, you know, you went into that experience a day early, not quite sure how it was all going to right. fit together, right? You had that flexibility, whether you whether you preferred it or not, like it wasn't scripted, it wasn't like mm-hmm. the event professional's dream to have this is how it's going to happen, A, B, C, D, and E, right. but because you were allowed that flexibility to live in that moment, it really made for a magical night. It is, did. Is what it sounded like. And part of that is because as the auctioneer, and, you know, Mark and I are seen as a team now in most places that we go, and I love that. Whether you like it or not. Whether you, you like it or both. not, we're both coming, baby. <laughs> we are both coming. But um, No, you guys are a good team. In they all they oh. rely on you and trust you because of the years of real compassion that you gave them. It's not a show. It's you. When you show up, you give a crap. Mm-hmm. That's why I wanted our ta- tagline to say, <laughs> "You want to? You, it's too much editing to bleep, right?" Oh, so we'll go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. Stokes Auction Group, we give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't know if I got it or not. I don't know if I was loud enough. But uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I'd love that to be our tagline because well, we do. Well, yeah. we give a big one. I think that's taken by a toilet paper company. I know, in but seriously, yeah. I, then. Then, hmm. You never know when the flames of inspiration are going to be lit up in a room. Uh, for, for anybody. Like that. Yes. That came out of nowhere. Right? That came out of us us hugging her and her yeah, crying saying, and us hey, crying. And, let's, yeah. Yeah. let's hear this story. Let's let everybody else hear this story. You and Mark, having been doing this for enough years, know that, hey, this could ring a bell. And and it ended and with... it did. Yeah. And it, and it the way that we... We said to her when she right after she agreed, I said, "It's time to share Natalie with the world." Yeah. She's been gone for nine years. It's time to share her with the world now. Absolutely. You know, you never know, Un- guys. Unfortunately, yeah. you, never you, know. you never know. Unfortunately, we do focus on w- those instances that we've all been through in in our past, where you have given the microphone to a, a person and it ended up being a disaster. Yeah. We've all been there. Right. Which is, that's why we always tell everybody, mm-hmm. don't give the microphone unless right. you know for sure. Yeah. I think but something times that... times have changed. They and have. I think it's okay to be a little risky. They have. And and if you have that precursor with that person, because like I told Jen, I said, you know, there's a timeline thing. We need to get people home, so keep it short. And I was out of her view, and she center stage, and I felt her story kind of getting off track. So I just walked up in front of her, and I just... Touched my hand on the stage like that and smiled at her. And she closed her eyes and smiled and got right back to Natalie. So you maybe have that pre-talk with them if you're going to give them the mic or whatever and say, keep it short, I'll help you with that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I could put a whole other episode in the can right now about timeline because it's so fresh on my mind. And I know we've kind of been a little flighty here where it's like, hey, have a timeline and stick to it. But also, like, let things breathe. And I think if you have a timeline that is too compacted where you don't have the all opportunity to let things breathe, you're there for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, I can tell you that from my experience on my event on Saturday night, it was too long. It has timeline issues. We need to adjust things to make it a better guest experience for everyone. But at the end of the day, we succeeded on capturing the spirit of that event. That is where we succeeded. But so you're we need also to find br- a way to marry the two. You're also bringing together groups that haven't come together in the past. This is new. Yeah. This is a very new thing. And literally, hats off to all these tribal leaders that are focusing on their people, their youth. And this is new. This is this year two or three? This is the second year. That, and so this is happened. a new adventure for them. So they're all still learning how to navigate that mesh because historically that has not been comfortable for them. Well, and I, I can't speak to the historics of it personally. I can't. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know I it did. well. But I just did. I, all I know is it's very <laughs> inspiring to see these groups come together. And um, I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. I think it has huge potential good to be one of the biggest fundraisers in the Pacific Northwest, to be honest with you. I, I, I really believe that to be true. And one of the things that would really help make that event run smoother in light of what you told us briefly about your experience, there's got to be one person in charge. 
There should be one person in charge instead of six leaders. Yeah. That could be a meeting. That that might be a meeting. You know, there's just so many different personalities. And and I don't want anybody to be offended if they hear this, and they are. But it's, it's... it's always a goal of mine. Like I, I, and and part, this is partly why I wanted to cover this topic today is like, who am I to go into a ballroom like this and tell them how to do mm-hmm. anything? Who am I? Exactly. Right. And it's hard for me to go in and say, Hey, you should do this. And one person or one person in charge or no more items in the silent. It feels very, it doesn't feel good for me to go in and say, this is how you do it. Now, if you're looking for leadership, I'm happy to sit down and give you my 10 cents. Yeah, but this point. is not like a, this is how it must be done scenario. And it shouldn't be. It should be about what they want and how I can push them in the direction based on my experience to be the most impactful organization they can be. So it's it's a lot to unpack. I know this is. I know we were planning on doing a short episode, and I'm throwing some big topics out here. No, it's but great. It's what's top of mind for me, and it's what I'm going to spend my Thanksgiving break on. You know, I'm thankful for what I get the opportunity to do now that I have this responsibility to be a leader of these nonprofit events in different markets. How do I use the influence that I have been bestowed to better lift up these communities? And that needs to be my North Star and my guiding principle in life. But and if at you times don't, it, it, yeah. you, it gets foggy. If you don't think that way, you don't belong in the business. Well said. Yeah. So think that way. Yeah. Think that way. Well, I guess that just brought it to a head, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're thankful for you. Thanksgiving and yes. everything. Break some turkey, drink some bread. Yeah, you know what? Drink some bread, drink some turkey. I don't know, um, do what you do. These boys come every Tuesday to do this podcast, and I know there's plenty of days that they don't want to do it. So I would like to say to all seven of you out there, (laughs) maybe eight this week, I am grateful and thankful for these two gentlemen doing this podcast as well as doing the Ivan Files. It has been, they have taken a 90-year-old's life and given him purpose, and that is something be thankful for so thank you both for that you are welcome thank you the feeling is mutual yeah this is cool you know we you kind of look back at like this podcast run and what it is and what it has become and and there's just a lot of things have come out of it for me where you really gain perspective on why we do what we do Mm -hmm. and i feel like today's episode is a great example of that but i would like to thank you for allowing us to crash your house you feed us every tuesday lunch every tuesday it's uh it's it's something that i feel is a opportunity not an opportunity but like it's a gift to be able to spend these tuesdays with you me too yeah. and there's a lot of other stuff going on that we could probably allocate to yeah. our time to and we choose to continually be here on tuesdays and we hope it brings value to you out there but it brings value to us and me Big and, time. and everything and you guys totally every week my life, so absolutely yep. agree with fills that. my cup every week keeps our family tighter and tighter and tighter it does that's what it does it does you know? that's all it does yeah yeah so thank you so much for joining us uh fill your cups this weekend enjoy some football go kooks if they win the apple cup oh my god oh, man it's i mean it's a long shot that'll be we're going really to the seahawks it's on thanksgiving huge. It's, a long shot. it's never been a bigger game ever, ever <laughs> people are saying people are saying be well and thank you for giving yes keep your vision clear and your heart open that's right and always go out and do good bye guys Have a good night. Thanks.